So Val, first of all, I just wanted to ask you about sort of where you started off from. Where did you first uh, fall in love with rugby? Um, my first rugby experience was at uh, the oldest rugby club in the world, Blackheath. Uh, I think it's South East London and um, started my minis rugby there, coming from uh, uh, growing up in London, I always, it's more of a football area, so I never really fell in love with rugby or had any type of entitlement towards it, so rugby was never first choice, but my father was a rugby player, and uh, when I think I was about seven or eight years old when I went into minis and touched the ball, scored it on my first time and fell in love with it ever since and never looked back really. Yeah, and so would you say your family had had a big impact on you um, it, in your rugby career? Yes, they have, absolutely. I know your father likes to talk to you about the game and, and stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a very critical man, but uh, we do whatever we can to succeed and sometimes there's harsh words, it's never what you want to hear, but if you want to improve and go forward, it's it's what needs to be said, really, so that's how we see it. And when did you first start to think that maybe rugby could be a career for you and you could go a long way in the game? Um, I think I think it was once I went to Georgia. Once I, I was the youngest player to play, I think, in the Georgian Prem. I was about 14, maybe 15, when I got played my first time there with all these grown men, so it was, uh, I was being bushed around a lot. but. Uh, I think the game surrounding it made me feel full in love with it. So I don't think it was ever a doubt of ability, but it was more than are you willing to sacrifice this much and give everything around it to be involved. And once I got accustomed to what rugby is really all about, then I never looked back really from there. And that would have been a learning experience for yourself. What did you learn from, from going back over to Georgia and playing with well, all Oh, the physical ability, the nature of being a forward and how dedicated boys are from um, really not a big financial uh, background they come from. They don't really earn a lot of money, but they're just in love with the work and just being around each other and with whatever little they have, how dedicated and motivated they are and how much they love being around each other, which really rugby's all really about. And, you know, that made me fall in love with them, that sort of, sort of bond and uh, worked on from there, really. And obviously you signed for Gloucester from Worcester in 2017. So can you talk to us a bit about the what made you move to Gloucester and your first sort of experience here? Uh, I think that was, what, was my sixth year here. So uh, I think we were doing really well at Worcester. We were building, building, I think the team was improving. But then I reached a certain point when I just, I needed to not not necessarily take a step up, but I just wanted to find another place where I could improve. And uh, that was it really. And Gloucester was, I think, building towards that with so many, so many experienced players, which I could learn from myself. And then so many youngsters coming in as well. So it was a, I really felt like if I joined that team, I could have really improved, and, and I still feel like I am still improving in some ways. So uh, it's a very, it's a very hard place to and a very harsh environment to be around. But if you want to improve, it's exactly the place where you want to be. Yeah, you mentioned six years and 99 games later. So what does the club mean to you now? Well, it means everything, you know. From my, you know, there's really a place where you start your career. A place where you, you, a place where you really find your feet, and uh, I'm just, uh, I really feel that um, slowly and slowly, I've picked up a lot of cues from the game, learnt a lot, learnt from my mistakes, learnt around from the players around me. I think everything around that needs time, and um, the coaches. I'm not really an easy personality either, so the coaches have had to put up with a lot of me, but they know that it's all with good intention and. Uh, I think my biggest, my biggest take from uh, rugby and the most su successful trait that I have is I learned a lot from small qualities from everyone. Doesn't matter where they come from or what background, academy or senior or international. I think everyone brings something to, uh, to the field or even off the field. So there's always something you can learn from any player. Whether or not you want to learn that is, is the most important point, I, I presume. 
in the professional era, how much can you learn and how much do you want to learn throughout your career and that is, that is the template of my career and that's what I keep want to uh, utilise in my mind. Yeah, is there anyone else in particular that really helps you at Gloucester? I think George has worked with me very harshly. We've, uh, we've learnt how to get the best out of me in terms of playing smart, utilising your energy, not trying to you know, just go 100% attack on everything whilst making mistakes, waiting for the game to come to us, picking our opportunities, and then when those opportunities come to give it everything. But like I said, it's, I think a successful athlete, never mind rugby, but any athlete is, is a player who can learn from anyone, learn small traits. So if it's nutrition, if it's stuff off the field and how to be ready, or just learning about small technical traits or someone in the gym. So there's always something you can learn from anyone. And if you have that sort of mindset and you keep looking like that, then I really do think that anyone, you can still constantly improve and get better as a player and as an athlete. And some more people that are really important to the club, obviously the Gloucester fans as well. So how much do they mean to you? And how much well, they've been you? very humbling for me. I mean, my first two years was very injury stricken. Um, I've had amazing games in front of them. I've had some bad games in front of them, but no matter what, they're always behind you. And that is the most important thing for an athlete. You know, um, uh, you're only as good as your last game, but the sort of love and dedication the fans have towards their players. I think um, when you love your team so much, you're very harsh towards them, but you're behind them. It's sort of, of uh, what I see my father is like a little bit, you know. They, they just want you to be the best. They just want to support you and they want you to be successful. And that's why they're being harsh. They're not being harsh, you know, just just to follow up on negativity or let negativity win in the end. You know, they just want you to be the best and, you know, they will give, they will give everything and they'll stand behind you. So, and that's why it's important for the players, you know, to front it up. And that's what sports is. And that's the beautiful thing about rugby. And do you have any standout memories from your six years here at Gloucester? Uh, obviously, making the Challenge Cup final was amazing. Um, I think it's, it's the, I would say, individually as a prop, you don't really get a lot of uh, opportunities to play. Full on rugby, you know, yeah, I, 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 the scrumming, mauling, like the breakdown or something, always tired, always exhausted. So I think it's those battles with so many combinations of players and amazing players I've been with, you know, like you've had old greats like Tom Savage, John Afoa, Jeremy Thrush, you've had Hibbard, you've had, you know, from the old generation, Mostert and everyone. And then you've got players in today coming in like Louis Rizamet, you got you know, old thugs like Johnny May. He thinks he's a thug, he's not a thug. But yeah, you know, that sort of, when you've come from such an amazing line of players which you play, play with, you know, it's quite a worrying now because I'm at, what, I'm 30 now and I, I was always the youngster within the group. I was always the young one coming through and uh, suddenly you reach a sort of middle age where you're not young or you're not old either, so. I really keep my mouth shut. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but it's been it's been a good road so far. But to be honest, it's not really a time to recollect what I've achieved because I really see it as I've not really achieved anything. Everything's in front of us. Everything's to be worked for, and I'm looking forward to the stuff ahead. Yeah, and that obviously leads me on to quite nicely to the present and yourself. You're pl playing really well. Are you enjoying rugby more than you ever have before? Uh, like I said, I don't think we've achieved anything because we're playing a good brand of rugby or I feel like individually it's because uh, it's because of the work done by the staff members around me, physios, everyone, you know, giving me more time than normal, giving me more attention so, and uh, they depend on me to perform and that's what I really see. I don't realize I see nothing of what I've done so far as is, is an achievement. It's just a stepping stone to where we want to go and it's time to perform, not to look back at what I've achieved. But you're excited at the, the potential that this squad has and you're confident that you, you can win, some, win something? I never really looked that far ahead. Of course, we have the ability. Uh, I think the Premiership games that are happening are just amazing quality right now 
from all the teams I involved, I really do think anyone can beat anyone. But you know, we never rely on the fact that we have the potential. My entire career, I've been told I have the p potential to be something, but uh, I've never achieved anything. So I don't really look at our games in front of us as we have the potential. I just look at it by each training day and each each game week on what we must do, and then people around us can talk about our potential and what we do, but we need to stay focused on every individual thing that we're going to do out there. Congratulations on your 100th appearance on Friday. Um, if there's a message to the Gloucester fans, do, do you have one? Big thank you to everyone who supported me. Thank you for putting up with me. I know I don't really seem the happiest human being on the, on the field, but trust me, if you were a loose head, probably you wouldn't be smiling either. <laughs> so thank you so much to everyone.